Hello learners, welcome to your course for basics of pattern making and sewing. Today we will discuss on the topic steps for garment construction. So this is one of the unit of your course basics of pattern making and sewing. So in this session we will discuss about the fabrics, what fabrics are, how you can select and prepare the fabric for garment construction. We will discuss about the layouts, what different types of layouts are there for the garment construction and we will discuss about marking on fabric. So this particular unit steps for garment construction is designed in such a way to make you understand that th there are different criteria which are used for the fabric selections from this particular unit you will understand what different criteria are used for a uh, selection of a fabric for a good construction of garment you can demonstrate and explain the steps in uh, preparing of the fabrics before cutting and sewing and you can list different types of layouts of the fabric for the garment construction so first let us understand what fabrics are fabric when we talk about uh, apparel or a garment or when we talk about fashion design first thing which comes in our mind is the fabric so fabric is a material which is made through weaving which is a method of fabric construction we have discussed where it is a fabric which is made from the weaving knitting or spreading or bonding like we use some types of glue or uh, just fix the yarns together that may be used in the production of for the many goods like garment curtains or bags so this is what in the whole is said as the fabric so a textile in any material which is made up of interlacing of fibers and that it, it is said as the fabrics. So there are two main types of fabrics we generally use in the garment construction. First is the natural fabric and second is the synthetic or man-made fabrics. So natural fabrics such as we have the wool, cotton, silk and the linen which are used or uh, obtained from the uh, natural sources like we have silk from the animal source and we cotton from the plant sources in such a way we have different natural fibers and synthetic fibers are the or the fabrics which are made in cam with the use of chemicals so this is a broad description about the fabrics then there are certain steps we follow in the construction of a garment. The first and the most important step is the selection of fabric. Because if you have design or have a very good design in your mind, so it is very important to understand what type of fabric you will select for that particular design. So the correct selection and the uses of uh, right fabric type is the key to any good design like if you have designed a very beautiful uh, uh, sketch of a garment and you don't know how what type of fabric you will select for construction of that particular garment or design so you cannot achieve with a good design so selection and the uses of the right fabric is the very important point so a good designer needs to identify the fabric by just feeling the fabric so with an expertise and with an experience the designers they just touch the fabric and they can feel what type of fabric it is and whether it is good for their design or not so the fabric are the essential categories uh, they are categories uh, in the three types or according to the three categories we can divide the fabric according to their weight so some of the examples of the weight of uh, category according to the weight of the fabric first is the lightweight fabrics we have the lightweight fabric medium weight fabric and the heavyweight fabric so lightweight fabrics in under this category comes the 
fabric with such as voile chiffon or the cheese cloth like they are very light in the in their weight then in the medium weight category we have the popolin cambric or the calico the uh, this such type of fabrics comes under the medium weight fabric then we have the heavy weight fabric such as denim corduroy casement all these comes under the heavy weight fabric then for the beginner like uh, if you are learning and you are the beginning a beginner in the construction of the garment so for a beginner it is good idea to work with a medium weight fabric because they are easy to handle and they do not slip and are uh, very easily managed when you are stitching that particular fabric so fabrics like chiffon georgette organza are like a uh, lightweight fabric or the sheer fabric we also said and can be handled easily by putting a paper underneath so when you are stitching this type of fabric like chiff uh, chiffon or a georgette you can put a paper under under that particular fabric and then you can go for the stitching this will make the stitching very easy so the careful attention needs to be paid for the right selection of fabric according to the consumer's need like according to the consumer's need and the demand of the design which you have created the fabric should be selected like for the kids wear it is appropriate to use the fabric which is softer like the cambric or the poplin this type of fabric we should use for the kids wear because they need soft fabric because they are uh, their skin is very soft so, so we need this type of fabric so at the same time you can use denim gabardine for the growing children because they have they are involved in lots of physical activities they have to play so this particular type like heavy weight fabrics they, it will give the more durability to their garments so thicker fabrics will be able to withstand wear and they can tear out easily so this type of fabric we can use according to the demand of the design and according to the consumer second step which we follow in the construction of garment is preparation of fabric like when we have the fabric so we have selected the fabric and uh, we are ready for the cutting of the fabric there before that we have certain preparation to do with the fabric so the first thing we have to do is correct fabric preparation is very important step before cutting so when you buy a fabric from a market it is not necessary that it is cut straight and it is pre shrink so right preparation of fabric will make the fabric of uh, which you are using for cutting and sewing task very easy and will result in the garment that will hang correctly and will not shrink after washing like if you have not done the pre preparation of the fabric before cutting and sewing so it have lots of uh, impurities and that that uh, changes can happen after it uh, can change the garment design after when it is constructed so first thing when in the pr process of preparation of fabric we do is the straightening of fabric straightening because when we obtain the fabric from the market it is not necessary that it is in the straight position so we have to straighten the uh, edges of the fabric before cutting so in this straightening of fabric first uh, technique we can use is the tearing tearing you can give a notch or a cut at one of the selvage which is the edge of the fabric horizontally and then you can tear the fabric in the straight line so this method is appropriate only for the firmly woven medium to heavy weight fab cotton fabrics because we do not use this technique the tearing technique uh, on the fabric which are embroidered or woven with the elaborated designs because when we have the cotton fabric you can just make a cut and tear in the straight line but if the fabric you have which is very embroidered or it is weaved in a jacquard uh, 
weave so if you tear that you can uh, damage the design of that particular fabric and it will not become straight so we generally use this tearing technique for the firmly woven medium weight fabric to the heavy weight fabric and generally for the cotton fabric Second technique we use for the straightening of fabric is pulling a thread. So this particular technique, this is good method for loosely woven soft fabrics. So what you can do, you can pull out a weft yarn through uh, the width of the fabric. You can just uh, uh, identify the width of the fabric and you can pull out a weft yarn from that in a straight line followed by a cutting with a scissor and it is more time consuming as compared to the tearing because you have to find a particular weft yarn uh, when you are doing this pulling of the thread because you have to just pull out the weft yarns from that so that you can have a straight line on the fabric then you have to cut the fabric from there. So this is a little time consuming process and but this is a good method to make uh, to be used with the delicate fabrics. Okay. Then the third technique we use is the blocking. Blocking is an important step before cutting and before pressing it is important to check the alignment of the fabric and during the fabric manufacturing when it is manufactured, it is possible that the fabrics has been stressed at various angles and the grain lines of the fabric are not at the right angle. So before cutting, it is important to straighten that particular fabric. You will have to stretch the fabric in the opposite directions like we have a square piece of fabric and you th when you see, you th think that it is not in the straight position so you have to do the blocking so, so you can stretch the fabric in the opposite direction till you get the well aligned fabric and after straightening press the fabric in the open width and keep it folded so this is how we do the blocking process for straightening of the fabric so blo after blocking the next preparation we do for the uh, fabric before cutting is the pre-shrinking so pre-shrinking is very important as a fabric which we bought from the market are not necessarily pre-shrink and can lead to the shrinkage in the garment. Like if we obtain a fabric from market and we directly go for the cutting and sewing of that particular fabric, it might get shrink after the garment is constructed. So it is very important to pre-shrink the, the particular fabric. Shrinking is more common in the natural fabrics like the cotton silk we use. It is very common that it can get shrink. So as compared to the synthetic fibers or the fabric we use, the natural fabrics get shrink more easily. So most of the unfinished cotton fabrics shrink. To shrink, to make it pre-shrink, what we can do to shrink fabrics uh, we can soak that particular fabric which we have bought for the construction of garment and we are planning to cut we can soak them in the water overnight and the next we can wash it in the morning and put it to dry so the amount the fabric was about to shrink after construction it is uh, ready and it has we have removed all the crease from that particular fabric and it is now ready to cut then this were some steps we follow before construction of garment like uh, preparation of the fabric we do before construction of garment then there is one uh, how if you have the fabric how you will identify what which part of the fabric is the right side and which part of the fabric is the wrong side so there are certain steps uh, you can identify the right and wrong side of the fabric. First, all fabrics have a right and the wrong side. So right side should have been on the outside of the garment when you wear. Like if you are wearing any garment, you can now feel 
or C that the fabric has both right and the front and back side. So garment when we wear the right side is outside of the garment. So for cutting of a pattern pieces on the fabric all marking is done on the wrong side. Like when we are going for the construction we are marking the pattern on the fabric. Uh, marking our pattern on the fabric we all marking we do on the wrong side not on the right side so right and wrong side can be identified uh, in the following uh, process first the right side is more smooth and lustrous as compared to the wrong side second uh, identification we can have is the selvage end is smoother on the right side and holes punches punched on the selvage are smooth to feel wherever whereas the wrong side holes are little rough on the feel then we can identify it like in the printed fabric if you have the fabric which has prints on it the print is darker and the clearer on the right side and it is little faded and not uh, clearly visible on the wrong side. Then for the woven designs, the design formed is strong on the right side while the wrong side which is uh, uh, of the fabric, it is uncut. It has, you can see a lot of uncut yarn when we talk about the woven designs. Then there is a uh, uh, there are some fabrics which we use for the garment construction. It has different directions of the design. So fabric may have varied designs and some fabrics have design running in all directions. Like if you have the geometrical designs while other flow on a specific direction. So directional fabrics which if we are using the directional fabrics have a specific design running in one direction for example fabrics with the alphabet print or the floral print where the flowers are is on the top and the stem is at the hemline and the animal figures we can have so this is in this particular type of fabric while we are cutting such fabric it is important to keep all the pattern pieces in one direction Suppose we have different directions of the designs, uh, the, suppose it is flower or the alphabet or any figure, we should keep in mind that we have to cut the pattern in the same direction. So fabric with a pile or a nap like a velvet corduroy needs special attention when we are cutting it and all the pattern pieces need to be cut in the same direction whether we we are cutting in the weft or the warp direction we should cut that in the same direction pile or the napped fabrics may have pile running up or running down so in we have to uh, uh, identify which uh, grain line we have to follow and according to that we cut the fabric then the important thing we have to keep in mind when we are going for the construction of the garment and we have the fabric to cut is the layout so layout is very important to understand to do not waste the fabric and to utilize the fabric at its maximum so layout is the placement on the fabric of all the pattern pieces that are required to make a particular garment so it is also called as the marker plan like we have patterns which are we have developed on a paper and then we have to transfer that pattern on a fabric so how we will place that pattern is uh, for that we use the layout method which we also say it as a marker plan so the purpose of market uh, planning is to calculate the amount of fabric required and helps to ensure the optimal utilization and minimize the wastage of the fabric. Like if we do not know about how to place that particular pattern on a fabric, the layout is very important when we talk about 
the in the process of garment construction so layout is the placement on the fabric of all the pattern pieces that are required to make a particular garment so it is also said as the marker plan and the purpose of marker planning is to calculate the amount of fabric which is required and it helps to ensure the uh, optimal utilization and minimum wastage of the fabric so leading to the most economical uses of the fabric so the fabric which we have to cut in a one direction are usually very uneconomical and uh, when you are using this process you will need more length whereas fabric where pattern pieces can be laid in both the direction will reduce fabric cost and if more than one fabric is used in the garment more than one marker plan is required like according to the design and the type of fabric we are using we have to choose the layout of particular pattern then there are different types of layout we use to uh, place our pattern first is the open layout second is folded layout and the lengthwise fold layout so let us see what open layout is when we talk about the open layout it means the fabric which is laid flat without any fold like when we have a piece of fabric it is laid flat without any folds on the fabric and then we place the pattern on that so open layout is essential for the sheer or the slippery fabric or the knit fabrics we generally use the open layout for the fabric which is transparent or very thin or the slippery and for the knitted fabrics for an open layout it is necessary to make full pattern we have to make full pattern in the open layout in the flat piece of fabric so it is commonly used uh, method in the industry since various layers of the fabric they, uh, they have to cut and at the same time so using this particular open layout they save time and they cut at a time a large number of fabric together with a straight knife uh, cutting machine they use to cut the fabrics so this is the uh, process how we use the open layout second is the folded layout folded layout in that we use the fabric which is folded in half either lengthwise or widthwise we have just folded the fabric half in any direction lengthwise or widthwise so in a lengthwise fold it is necessary to align the selvage so that they exactly meet each other so we have to align the both the selvage together to make a uh, proper fold so the fabric is folded right side facing right side uh, and the wrong side is the out like the we have to fold the fabric uh, facing each other at the right side and the wrong side is for the marking uh, marking uh, position the marking uh, and all the marking which we have to do of the pattern we do on the wrong side of the fabric then the third type of layout we use is the lengthwise fold or the lengthwise fold layout so fabric which is folded twice at the lengthwise from uh, so you can uh, just imagine that you have a fabric and which is uh, flat on the surface and you fold it twice on the lengthwise in order to bring both the selvage together like from one side you fold and then other from the another side so both the selvage are together in the middle of the fabric so this is good layout when front and the back of the garment needs to be cut on the fold then we use the lengthwise fold layout so these are the three types of layout we generally use when uh, for the fabric cutting and to place our pattern so in this picture you can see and understand the how we do the layout of a fabric of a pattern on a piece of fabric
then another step in the garment construction is marking after we have prepared the fabric we have done the layout of the fabric then the step comes about how we will do the marking of the fabric so after the pattern pieces are placed according to the chosen layout it is important to fix the pattern pieces on the fabric with a fine quality pins like we have in the picture you can see when we put our the patterns on the fabric to make it uh, attached there we use a fine quality of pins to fix that pattern pieces on the fabric then it is important to pin fold edge and certain lines of the garment first like when center lines of the garment which we are going to cut we have to pin that particular uh, positions of the pattern first and then the selvage or the edges of that particular we have to pin so also you can check the grain line of all the pattern pieces which are whether it is parallel to the selvage of the fabric or not if it is not we have to make it in the parallel position then marking when we start doing the marking of the pattern on the fabric marking is done after the pattern are laid on the wrong side of the fabric and you may use any of the following uh, method to trace the pattern first you can either you can use a fabric marking pen or a pencil to trace out that pattern on the fabric or you can use a tailor's chalk with a sharp edges to uh, draw the outline of that pattern pieces or no mark should be visible on the right side of the fabric so you have to choose the marking pen or the chalk very very carefully that the mark should not be visible on the right side of the fabric so as you would not like to see the garment which has lines or the mark of the markings on the outside of the garment so we have to make the marking very carefully so in this particular session we discussed about the fabric its type and its process of selection we described the layout and its type and we explain the role of marking in the construction of garment hope this session will be beneficial for you thank you